All right, this patch shows three different ways to detect if this number, which is this big slider here, is between 45 and 55. So this is really common frustration with students. Yep. How do you do something as simple? In any other programming language, this is just trivial. You just write an if statement. Right. You say, if the number is greater than that and less than that, then do this thing. Right. Super simple. So in Mac, sometimes it can be, um, it can make you feel really stupid to try and do simple things sometimes. So, um, but I've, you know, I've you just have to. For sure. Well, you just have to, you know, figure out how Max does things. Uh, um, now, Max does a lot of things that are trivial in Max, but would be really complicated in any other language. So right. it's always kind of a trade-off. So, all right. So I have this slider up here that's going to go from zero to one hundred, and I want to detect when the number is in this yellow box range here, which is f between forty-five and fifty-five. So, three different ways to do that. Uh, one is using greater than equal statements and less than equal statements. So the definition of when the, the number is in this range of 45 to 55, that number is going to be greater than 45 and, and less than 55. You see, they all fire off when it's in this proper range here between 45 and 55. They're all saying yes, yes, yes. So there's three different ways of doing this. The first way here says, okay, um, the number 50. Uh, is it greater than or equal to 45? Yes. Is it less than and equal to 55? Also yes. And then if both of these things are yes, you use this logical and statement, this ampersand, ampersand. This will only, this is uh, a logic tester. It will only fire off a yes if both of its inlets are true. If one or the other is false or if both of them are false, then it gives a false. So you can see here, um, in this case, it is greater than four, greater than or equal to 45, but it's not less than or equal than to 55. So it says, nope, not within the range. Now you can do the exact same thing. The second method here, you can just do it in a big if statement. There, there is if statement. You can do if, if statements in Max. It's, right. very, it's very easy. Uh, I tend not to because I don't know. I like the other way of doing it. I've completely drank the Max Kool Aid. So here you just say if dollar sign i1 greater than or equal to 45 and and dollar sign i1 uh, is less than or equal to 55 then one else zero so that just means if it satisfies the greater than and also the the less than statement then i'll put a one otherwise uh, i'll put a zero do you want to talk briefly about that dollar sign i oh dollar sign one just means the first element in the list that's coming into here now there's only one element coming in so it just means dollar sign i1 means the integer that's coming in cool that's, that's all it means um, so that's another way to do it. So these are both doing sort of identical things. It's really up to you uh, which one you like better. Um, now there's another way here using the split object. So split's a neat object. It just has, you take a number in and it's going to route those numbers either. Um, so if the number is between, if the number coming in is between 45 and 55, which are splits two arguments, uh, it will send that number out its uh, left outlet. Otherwise, it'll send the number out of its right outlet. So in this case, you can see um, the numbers aren't in splits range, so they're going out the right outlet. And when they are in splits range, then they come out the, uh, the main outlet, the, the, the left outlet. So um, split can be used to do this kind of uh, testing. Um, and when it, you know, I'm using triggers here to trigger a one or trigger a zero so that I get the same behaviors I'm getting in these other two areas. So uh, very different ways to accomplish the same thing. Uh, okay, any, what am I? No, I think that's great. Good, okay.